Welcome to the 16th 365 camp. And again, my name is Yang Zhao. Um, I know it's difficult to remember the name, um, so if you forgot about it, just remember um, my initial Z. Okay. So um, I will want to spend the first half minute to talk a little bit about my research. And uh, you know, I'm going to talk about communications, but communications is about all about how you transmit signals, how you preserve signals, how you actually filter out certain uh, signals. Those are all important for all aspects of the research uh, I'm doing. And my main research focus on nanophotonics. So you can like separate this word into nano means nanostructure, nanotechnology, and photonics means something related to photo or light. So what I combine is I design nanostructures and use them to manipulate behaviors of light. And with that, we can actually create uh, new tools and functionalities. For example, I work on optical force microscopy, which combine light and optical forces with atomic force microscope. And tomorrow at the lab tour, you will have an opportunity to, to see part of this part of the research. And we can shine light or pulse light into cells, and then we can use uh, the atomic force microscope to listen to the forces. And eventually, we can map out our image, what's going on inside or on top of the cells. And and how about these uh, molecular interactions we can resolve. And we can also uh, make sensors, and the two types of sensors I'm most interested in. One is variable sensors. We can design these nanostructures, and then we can use them as a variable device we can attach to our skin and use that to detect certain molecular markers. Then for us, uh, for example, molecular markers that's related to early disease uh, diagnosis. And also, we can make these sensors like a stand-alone uh, diagnostic tools. So what we can do is we can collect, uh, we can use them um, to like filter out uh, drugs. We can use them as a drug purification, and again, um, capitalize on the sensitivity and a light-induced force uh, given us. So that's enough about my research. And today, our focus is communications. And first, I want to talk about um, the voice communication, how we transmit voice signals. So I'm talking here, I'm generating a lot of voice signals, and your ear actually is collecting these signals. And so here I show um, anatomical figures of our ear. So I'm no biologist, but here is something very interesting about how these signals are transmitted through our ears. You have the outer side called pina of the ear, and then that collects the sound signals and transmit it through this outer range of the ears. And there is a membrane called tympanic membrane. It's our eardrum. So they amplify these signals in air. And after the signal is transmitted to this part, this is our middle ear. And this drum actually is sending out signals to three small pieces of bones inside of ear, the malus, the incus, and the piece. And these drums, actually, these little pieces of uh, bones, transmit these sound signals further into the inner part of the ear, which is called cochlea. Cochlea is a fluid-filled, uh, like small organ, and inside cochlea is, uh, is some cells called the hair cells. So you can see uh, these are just cartoon image of these hair cells. They're uh, actually aligned, like sticking out hairs, uh, look like hairs, and they're sticking out. And these hair cells will sense the movement uh, surrounding them because they're in liquid. Thinking about how your um, sound signal getting amplified inside the liquid, you know, like all sound signals transmit better in liquid or solid than in air. So this is how these sound signal got amplified here. And as the hair cell feeling the movement, they trans transmit these voice signals or sound signals to our brain. That's how we hear. And also there's, uh, I listed uh, some of these, uh, I got this information from this five side. You can check them further if you're interested. And there are all kinds of levels of the sound signals. From 50 dB is just very quiet sound, like air conditioner, to a very loud sound, uh, such as the jet taking off or the gunshot, which is 140 dBA. We will talk slightly about these signals. And the, you can see these are scanning electron microscope images of our hair cells. And these are normal hair cells. And you can see they're aligned periodically in a very neat order, and those are healthy ones in our ear. But if we uh, constantly hear very uh, constantly hear very loud noises, and our hair cell can be damaged permanently, and the below images are some, uh, some, some of the hair cells are damaged that I, I found on the internet. So one thing to keep in mind, not to listen to, constantly listen to very loud noises. And what are considered 
loud or what are considered quieter noises. And for voice signals or for sound signals we are listening to, uh, those are have uh, the unit called the DBA. It's called A rating signals. Those because our ear uh, actually listen to low frequency first. So we, we couldn't actually, we're not very sensitive to low, fr low frequency audio signals. And DBA means they actually correct this low frequency signals as a relative signal. So if you look at the signal unit, it's 20 times the log of 10 and A2 divided by A1. A2 is our signal that we hear. So it's a relative uh, scale. And looking at this chart at the x-axis is the frequency of the audio signals we are receiving. And the low frequency is like uh, 125 in hertz or high frequency into 8,000 hertz. Right? You can actually, uh, corresponding these uh, images to uh, these objects and knowing uh, like the, the dripping of your faucet is a very low frequency and also a very low uh, intensity sound signal. But the gunshot here, anything in the dark, uh, um, like pink, purple, pinkish, it's something like we should try to avoid, for example, the jet taking off is a high frequency, but also high intensity signal. So the intensity is where uh, is damaging our uh, like hair cells inside our ear.